Hey everybody, it is me, it's your old buddy Steve Simonson, and here I am yet again on the Oscars.com podcast. This is episode number 161 for you scorekeepers at home, and what that means is all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 161, and you'll be able to see today's show notes, details, and uh, any links that we may add to the episode as well. So uh, today I've got with me my special guest, Michael Bukowski. Say hello, Michael. Hey, Steve. How are you? Uh, I'm well, as always. Uh, thank you for joining me today. You know, I brought Michael on because we want to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, which is how do we drive company growth and company performance? And I get this question all the time, you know, hey, you know, zero to 1 million is one journey, one to 10 million is another journey and 10 to 50 million is yet another journey and beyond, by the way. Yeah. And what's the difference? And one of the things I tell people is, especially in that one to 10 range, you're going to have to get good at people. And uh, man, oh man, that is like, uh, like I'm peeling their, their fingernails right off because they're like, oh, that people, I'm going to automate this thing and have no people. But it doesn't really work like that in the real world. What do you think about that, Michael? No, I agree. And, and you know, the, the bigger picture here is uh, you and I have been doing this for a while, right? We've, we've seen it all for a while. And, and, and anybody that thinks, you know, wow, the last two years, the last five years, things really changed. Um, if you think that's going to slow down, you're, you're betting the wrong way. It, it's, change is going to get, change is going to change even faster and faster, right? Um, and that really drives the importance of, of why you've got to have good people, right? And, and why you've got to have them, you know, uh, be smart and ready and, and, and adaptable and, and flexible and come up with solutions and, and all that. So you got to anticipate change and you got to uh, anticipate problems because that's why you, they've got a job while you've got a job. You're solving problems. You got to get into that kind of mindset. Yeah, well, I can't agree more. Uh, I just want to reiterate, you know, Michael and I, uh, I'll translate what he says when we've been doing this a while. We're old. Okay. I, well, I got you. That's translation <laughs> one. Uh, I'm older than you. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But uh, we've been around the block a couple of times. Uh, but translation two is we've already made all the mistakes, right? Yes. Uh, as I can speak for myself anyway. I've already made all the mistakes at least once, by the way. I'm not a fast learner at, at all times. And what that means is once you make the mistake and then you find the solution, man, it's way easier to skip to the end and just go for the solution. Yeah. And in my mind, you know, part of that solution has been to focus on people's strengths. You want to talk about, you know, your background and, and strengths and so forth? Sure. Well, um, uh, I'm a strengths-based coach, and I got into it because it just resonated with me. The founding phrase for all of this strengths-based stuff is from Don Clifton, the guy that, that came up with the idea. And he says, imagine what would happen if we focused on what was right with people rather than fixating on what was wrong with them. And for me, that's just the right way to look at the world, right? If you've got to go into battle every day and, and, and take on challenges and all, isn't it better to go in with a positive attitude with the idea that the people you're with are good people and that together you can solve these issues? And then it drives down to, so tell me about good people. What makes them good? Well, everybody's different, right? Um, but they've all got unique strengths. And Gallup, the election polling people that we hear in the news you know, all the time now, turns out that's not really their big business. Their big business has been the last 50 years or so studying the American workforce, researching successful people, what made them successful, and doing these deep, deep dives into what is it that makes a, a, a person and a company successful. And they've come up with an assessment that you can take for in 40 minutes um, that comes back and tells you what are your strengths, right? What are the things that you are really good at? Um, and you and I have talked about this. You've got ideation, right? And that's been crystal clear throughout your career. Um, I've, I've got futuristic and strategic, uh, right? I, I kind of live in tomorrow and I see ways to get there. Um, I've got connectedness, which means I'm a, I'm a team player. I like bringing everybody along uh, and doing it. These are strengths that I bring to everything that I do. And, uh, and when I focus on those and leverage those, that's where I can make the biggest impact. That's where I can have the most growth. Well, I, again, I have to say that it's, it's been a real big key for me in my time uh, as a CEO in particular to focus on strengths, to f figure out this um, equation exists, right? This is ultimately a, just another system to me. And it's sure. like, how do you make a system for getting good performance out of a team 
and in, you know, getting and driving something we'll talk about later, probably engagement from a team. And like, I, I'm always wanting a systemic solution. And the, when this was revealed to me, uh, probably in the early, maybe it's mid 2000s, uh, I was just blown away. First of all, I took the assessment. So um, I, I highly recommend everybody, every awesome out there listening, you get on there and you take the assessment. We'll put some links to the assessment uh, from Go Be Strong. That's Michael's company. Um, it's actually the same price, whether it's from go be strong or anybody else, but the key is Michael is, uh, an expert at it and he will even, I think, reward you with a free call. Is that right, Michael? Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, if, if you weren't agreeing to that before, I pressured you into it now. So, <laughs> aha. so for awesomers out there, it's really smart to get this assessment done just to get a frame of reference, what your strengths actually are. And I, I have to tell you when I read after taking the assessment, which is very, um, it's not leading in any way. You can't tell when it asks the questions. It just says, hey, do you feel more like this or more like that? And you're like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like this. And, and you just kind of go with your gut and you follow your instinct. And then I read this report that is like strikingly similar to my personality and to my own what makes me happy and makes me feel fulfilled. And I'm astounded at the level of insight. Have you heard those kinds of stories before, Michael? Oh, absolutely. And then one of the beauties is it's going to come back to you with strengths, right? You're, you're, it's not going to come back to you and say you're a bad person, right? Somebody that's really different than you could take the assessment and, and they're going to say, wow, this really reads like me. And they're going to feel good about it uh, because it's, it's who they are and what makes, what makes them successful. It doesn't tell them what they will be good at. It tells them how they are good at it. Yeah, which is a big key. And I, I specialize in strengths malpractice, as Michael will tell you, uh, which basically means I, I don't pay attention to the rules. I make my own rules, which is a terrible way to go. I, I recommend that you go with uh, the, the proper approach, which is Michael's approach. And the point is, instead of us saying, oh, well, for somebody to be a great salesman, they have to be competition. They have to be achiever. Yeah. Um, those are logical things. My small brain goes, oh, that makes sense. Let's do that. This is not what that means because you can actually have strengths of any kind, empathy, harmony, command, anything, and be in any position. Isn't that part yeah. of uh, correcting my malpractice? Yeah, there's a great story about the, the VP of strategic communications who didn't have strategic or communications in her top five. It doesn't matter, right? She probably had other strengths. She did have other strengths um, that made her successful in what she did. Um, so, you know, she might've had, um, you know, uh, ideation like you do, or she might've had, uh, achiever or, you know, something else. It, it, you don't have to be a strategic communicator to be good at, at that. Yeah, that's, so the, first of all, it tells you what your, what your strengths are kind of wired into you, right? Even if yes. you can't verbalize it, even if you don't know it, this, they, they know it based on all the data and this Innate is a, natural talents. Yeah. Very important point that it's built in, you're wired into it. This is not a horoscope. This is not hocus pocus. Uh, this is not, you know, some a fortune teller. This is real hard data based yes. on lots of data points. Michael, can you say some of the history of uh, how this thing came about? Sure. They, um, well, there, there's a long history, but like I said, uh, Don Clifton uh, has came up with it over 50 years ago and they've now got, I think, 24 million people around the world that have taken the assessment in, I don't know how many languages, maybe 17 languages. Um, and, and it continues to be, you know, researched and understood uh, uh, by the Gallup organization. Again, this is what they do and they are, they are researchers. Um, and it's, it's just, a, 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 it, it, you're right. It's not a kind of a hocus pocus thing. It, it's all research based ongoing. Yeah you talk about big data and this is the ultimate in big data about yeah. people. Right. And yeah. you can tell people out there, the awesomers, uh, you know, my China team has taken the assessment both in Chinese and English. Um, they chose whichever language that suited them. Uh, but when they read it, they, they kind of um, four out of the five anyway, kind of like, yeah, that, that absolutely is me. And now I want to know more about how I can, you know, leverage these strengths, how I develop these strengths, these themes uh, as it were. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter where your people are located, in my opinion. It just matters if they're human. If you have yeah. workers that work for you that are human, this has applicability. And yeah. Michael, let's talk a little bit about why this matters. Um, uh, before we do, I want to just mention that 
the awesomers, uh, I did a book review on this book, um, Strengths Based Leadership. Uh, it's awesomers.com slash 18 if you want to go uh, have a listen to that. And I, it just tells you in uh, much longer form what, what I believe about this. But Michael, tell us some of the stats about strengths based leadership that help validate that this is uh, actually worthwhile and taking a look at. Sure. Well, so when you're in a, would you, as a leader, what you want to do is to create a strengths based environment, right? Where, where you have this vocabulary. Uh, where you know your strengths, and ideally, once you've gotten through that process and, and learned about it, uh, then you take some of your key people through it, uh, depending on the size of your company, maybe everybody goes through it. Um, and now you've got these words that you can share. Uh, everybody knows themselves better, everybody feels better about it, everybody's investing in the things that are going to make them better individually. And then you start using this vocabulary to talk to each other about it. So you could imagine being in a meeting and you could say, um, uh, hey, Cheryl, uh, you've got ideation. Can, w can you help us out of this? You know, and maybe Cheryl's not a senior manager, right? But she's got ideation. Everybody knows it because you've all talked about this. And, and you listen to Cheryl and you say, you know, she's got the innate ability to come up with ideas and we should see what she's got. Or you might turn to Robert and say, Robert, hey, listen, uh, with this project's been going on for a while. Could you help us close it out? And, you know, maybe Robert's got Achiever, and that's why you went to him. And, and Robert just has this natural ability to say, I'm going to finish this project, right? We're going to close this thing out. Um, and, and that's a really different than somebody that's got ideation, right? They kind of spawn ideas. Having somebody like Robert around that can sit and say, well, listen, we're going to finish these ideas. Now you're really building a team based on strengths that can be very successful. And when you see teams like that, the, the people are 18% more uh, performative. They, they are more uh, successful. Uh, the metrics for customers, uh, and again, Gallup research of all these companies, the customer, the customer metrics are 10% higher. Um, and as an organization, you have 73% less attrition, right? People feel they're engaged. This is the big word. They are engaged. They feel like they're a part of this operation. And around the world, only 15% of employees are engaged, right? Another 15% are actively disengaged, right? These are the people that are trying to tear apart the hard work that everybody else is putting in. And then that big group in the middle, that like 70%, they're just kind of showing up and doing whatever. So your ability to go in, well, first of all, fire the bad 15, okay? You and I have both been there, right? So yeah. you just fireball them Not out of here. tours is what they actually are. That, that yeah. lower, if they're actively disengaged, even if it's not conscious, they are walking around trying to destroy everything they come in contact yeah. with. Even if it's not fully overt, it's, it's, that's just what, they're completely actively disengaged, which is yeah. a beautiful thing. But if you can go in then to this middle group, the 70%, and make them more engaged, make them uh, understand what's going on, invest in them, help get them to invest in themselves, you know, now you can really take your company uh, different places. It, it's, it's a very, very powerful tool. So this is the, the headline for you awesomers out there listening. If you want 73% less attrition, pay attention to strengths-based leadership. Yeah. Uh, recently, uh, they came out with a new book uh, called It's the Manager. And Michael, can you, you know, give us a quick synopsis of you know, what, what the theory of that book is uh, or why that book yeah. exists? So we've, we've already touched on a bunch of these topics. You, know, you want people to be more engaged. You want them to be you know, bringing their best uh, efforts to work every day, things like that. So then they researched and they said, well, what are the, how do we control that? What are the things that impact all of that? And it turns out that 70% of the impact is the manager, that, 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 that you as a manager are responsible for 70% of, of whether those people are engaged and, and, and trying to do things. So your ability, I mean, sometimes you decide you want to try to hire some sort of you know, perfect employee. And, and hiring is just not at that level yet. It's just not easy to do that. So then you, the people come in and they're not working out, right? Well, it turns out it's your fault. <laughs> you, the whole 70% of it's your fault, okay? So some, some thing is on the people, but mostly you've got to create the environment and you've got to create the process and the, and the, the, the way of thinking, the culture that says, hey, we're in this together. We're going to work from our strengths. We're going to do what we're all best at. And, and when you can do that as a manager, you can uh, facilitate the growth in your company. Yeah, I, I think 
First of all, I, I want to admit that uh, I have a problem. We all have a problem as entrepreneurs. And that is, um, I, I don't know, the, part of my wiring is that I'm not a great manager. I, I don't know what the problem is, but that's just the way it is. There's other people who are great managers, but maybe they're not as great uh, at being entrepreneurs or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I tell myself as I cry myself to sleep anyway. <laughs> but the, the key is, if, if we are as entrepreneurs kind of always on the go. And if, if you're like me, right, it's more ideas than execution. You need people who are, are able to take the ball and get it done. Like Michael said earlier, the people who want to check things off their list, the people who are excited about the details, which the dis details destroy my psyche. I hate them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So by getting, instead of being a well-rounded individual, you become a well-rounded team. That's part of the payoff of, of strengths-based uh, environments. And to get a better work environment to create that engagement is something that can be done. And more importantly, it can be systemic. So, you know, first I say, you got to know yourself, then you got to have to make a commitment to thinking that this is a philosophy that you can roll out in the company. This is not something that you, um, I don't know, you, you listen to a podcast like this and, and the problem is solved. This is actually something that takes work. And so I know that most entrepreneurs out there are like, well, I already don't like managing people and this sounds like it's work. I'm going to push that off until some other time in the future. And I'll just tell you, uh, you can delay it. You can procrastinate. You can do whatever you want, but it's going to have to get solved if you really want to grow. And the people who grow in spite of this are the absolute minority, the absolute minority. Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody out there listening like, well, I, I do 10 million or 40 million and I, you know, I just do things my way or the highway. And that's cool. Great. It won't last forever. The house will come yeah. crumbling down. I, I guarantee you. Yeah. The, the people who create something sustainable and are able to scale those growth ladders, 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million. By the way, Michael and I have both done that multiple times, <laughs> right? This, this is yeah. not, you know, Michael's led an organization, a big teams, you know, from zero to 50 million uh, for a company we collaborate on way back when. And then another company, 50 to hundred plus million. So yeah. he knows what he's talking about. I've done this multiple times myself, you know, zero to 50 plus, 75 plus million. And it's the people that make the difference, everybody. If you don't, if you think you're just the, the king of the world or queen of the world and that it all relies on your back and you're somehow this magic elixir, it's just not true. Steve Jobs yeah. looks like a hero. Elon Musk looks like a hero. But those people had people, right? Yeah. That there's nobody who did this without a team. If you want a team and you want to create something special, you got to get invested in this concept and figure out a way to deploy it into your organization. And so because time is short uh, on a podcast, we don't have a, a great deal of time, uh, partially because Michael and I schedule, but Michael and I have committed to doing a, a kind of a presentation or webinar next two, next Wednesday. Now, I don't know when you're listening to this, but it's, it's going to be Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. If you're listening to this after that date, um, I don't know, play the, uh, you know, Price is Right, bump, 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 bump. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there'll be a replay. But either way, we're going to team up and, and we're going to do a, um, a presentation webinar so that Michael can explain point by point why this matters, why you should do it, yeah, and why it is a system that helps you kind of take these, these crazy notions. We have these terrible ideas about people. We think they're disposable. That's not true. Um, when you have talent and you have desire, you have an excellent resource. When you lack the talent, but you have the desire and the values, you can build the talent. You can build the skills uh, along with it. Uh, but when you just treat people, freelancers in particular, like tissue paper, you're just going to keep spinning your wheels and you're going to blame it on them and how terrible they were. Yeah. By God, I've just done this too long to, to keep watching this thing happen without providing at least an alternative resource. So yeah. what do you think about my rant there? That went on what some time. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but let me give you a, a quick example. Um, so uh, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, these are, you know, companies we all know really well. And you would think that people would, you know, get to one of those places and love it. It would be the, the you know, the dream job and they, they would stay, right? Um, but it turns out that there's some movement in between the different companies. Facebook is unique in being a strengths-based organization. The uh, uh, VP of Human Resources there, you know, does this, and, and, and she interviews um, people and says in the interview, she says, 
tell me what you did on your best day at work. And what she's trying to do is get to understand, you know, what is it that you are best at? And then the employees at Facebook, she focuses on this, right? If you've got, um, like I said, achiever is an easy one to understand. It's the ability to, to really just complete tasks, check them off, get them off the list and stuff. So she will say, hey, listen, you've got Achiever. We've got a couple of teams that have got just a few too many ideation people, right? There's too much uh, ideation or activator or, you know, getting stuff started. Um, we want to put you on a team where you can use your talents for finishing stuff. And that's going to make the team better. And you're going to be recognized as having you being able to do what you do best. And it's going to be a good thing. So, um, you know, there are people that work at Facebook and then go to Apple. But it turns out that there are 11 times more people that go from Apple to Facebook. So for every one that goes over from Facebook to Apple, 11 go from the other direction. And, and that's the good news. At Google, it's 15 to one, all right? So for every person that leaves Facebook for Google, 15 go from Google to Facebook. And at Microsoft, it's 30 to one. These are amazing numbers, right? But the reason is, is that Facebook's got the retention. They've got people that are able to do what they do there on their best day at work, lots of days, right? It happens over and over and over again that they get a the chance to be what they're best at. And all that starts with understanding who you are, what you're best at, and, and, and then investing in it. A quick little example that we may get to in the webinar or certainly in, in some of my courses, you know, if you want to get better at handwriting, you don't learn to write with your other hand. You know, you don't, you don't try to, to say, boy, I could really be an awesome handwriter if I could write with both hands. That would be, you know, you, know, you figure out how are you going to get better at whatever, you know, if you're right-handed, how can I get better at writing with my right hand? You know, if, and if you're left-handed, it's how can I get better at that? You don't invest in the stuff that you're not good at and will never be good at. You invest in the stuff that you've got a strength in. And, and, and the Gallup assessment, the Clifton Strengths assessment helps you to find out what those things are. Yeah, I, I just, I love the philosophy because uh, it goes beyond even the, the, the strength side of it. Because over time, I've built certain skills to, to shore up where the, the things that I'm not naturally strong at. Um, I, I hate accounting, for example, but I'm pretty good at it. I, I understand every part of financial stuff and double entry and gap and non-gap and because I was forced to build those skills. And the same thing goes for any number of other skills I've been forced to, to build but I hate them, right? <laughs> yeah, I hate yeah. them. It's like I'm being tortured. <laughs> and so by, by focusing on strengths and knowing what we're good at and what we innately like to do, that actually creates the engagement in itself, right? It creates a positive environment. It creates something that self-reinforces a good place to be. And for everybody out there listening, if you want to understand, you know, why, you know, Facebook has 30 to one ratio to Microsoft, 15 to 1 to Google and 11 to 1 on Apple, it's because they've deployed strengths based leadership. And I can tell you, um, we were at Amazon one time. I don't remember if you were there this time, Michael, but um, we had our badges. At part of a, a Catalyst 88 event often will have us have name badges, and on the back, we have our strengths listed. And it, because it becomes part of our vocabulary, part of our discussion. And even the people in that particular Amazon department, the seller experience team, they're like, oh, hey, we're doing strengths. And they were talking about their strengths. and Every was having a nice uh, discussion about their strengths and how they show up. Yeah. It, it becomes a very effective way for people to communicate. And that, that even goes with the skeptics because I've had people in my company who are skeptical about, ah, oh, this isn't going to work and it, you know, this is all hocus pocus and so forth. But after they took the assessment and after they compared notes, it definitely became more real and more viable to them. Yeah. Any other um, words of wisdom here, Michael, before we tie it off? No, except I'm looking forward to the webinar. Um, I'm going to be able to put some slides up and some visuals to kind of help everybody kind of follow along. And we should be able to do the whole thing in just a half hour. I'm not going to tie everybody up forever. Um, but the idea of the webinar is let me walk you through this whole thing. Um, and then, you know, you can take the assessment. You can buy it from Gallup. You can buy it from me. Um, and then they give you reports and stuff. Um, what I can help you do is between some videos that I've made and some other materials and then some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I can help to kind of make sure that you don't just take the assessment and walk away from it, right? That's, that's the, 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 the place where I wish Gallup could just reach a little bit further. And they, they do by making people like myself a coach. 
but, but too many people take the assessment and then they forget about it just a week later, right? And you really need something that makes you kind of, you know, bring it to life and, and see it in your own, your own daily living um, over a period of time. So that repetition lets it sink in and stick. Um, and that's part of what I hope to do and uh, help people out. Yeah, without a doubt. So listen, again, everybody, we're going to put the link on the page. You go to osmers.com slash 161 to, to grab the link. It's going to be uh, the webinar put on by Michael and his company, Go Be Strong, on November 20th, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, you can do your own math on what that means for, for your time. But, you know, for the Osmers out there, again, I can't stress this enough. If you're going to be a true CEO, a true leader, not just a self-appointed galactic commander of the universe, right? Because we can all give ourselves titles. If you're actually going to be a CEO and you're going to lead people, why not get good at it? You know, yeah. why not at least learn the, the processes that are involved? And I'll tell you, selfishly, this is one of the most freeing things that you can do. Because once you identify the things you hate to do that you're not even that good at, and somebody else loves to do those things, in your organization and they get praised for it and, and you, you recognize them for it, that creates this, this extraordinary flywheel effect that uh, is ex very positive and extra nice to, to see. So uh, definitely please join us for that webinar. Uh, Michael's got a bunch of resources uh, already uh, built up for you. Uh, commit to it. You know, I, I would say that it's, I'll probably repeat it next week as well, but you've got to commit to it at least once a month, have, an hour uh, once a month that you just spend on this type of thing. Maybe it should be more often, maybe less often. I don't know, but at least once a month, how are you going to develop your strengths? How are you going to be a leader? And we'll talk about in the, in the webinar, by the way, the dark sides of the strength, uh, yeah. the so-called barrier labels, but every strength has a, has a dark side if you don't develop the strength. And I can tell you firsthand, one of my strengths is responsibility which I view as a curse, just to be clear, because the dark <laughs> side is I'll say no, never, and I'll kill myself to deliver on my word. I will never, ever uh, want to fail somebody. If I fail, I'll figure out how to make it up to them in you know, multiple ways. And that is a destructive <laughs> part of my life. I'm not going to lie to you. So uh, managing your strengths and developing that strength is just as important as making sure you don't let the dark side take over. Michael, any yeah comments about that? No, I just, um, it, it is really a lot better way to live, right? We started with the idea that, you know, uh, what would the world be like if we could focus on what was right with people instead of fixating on what was wrong with them? Um, and that's, that's why I've got go be strong, right? I mean, you have to go, you have to take action. And uh, you got to, you know, start something, you can't just sit there, you got to do something. So go, and then you got to be somebody, right? Who are you? Um, and then you, it's strong, right? You got to leverage those strengths, focus on the positive. Um, so I'll just end with go be strong. I love it. All right, everybody. Thanks again uh, for joining us on Osmers.com podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share, I don't know, review, do whatever it is that uh, makes me happy uh, so that I keep doing this. And uh, don't forget to join us next week. We might even throw in a little bonus episode where uh, Michael does a, a book review of It's the Manager between now and then. We'll see. That's uh, up There's for some grabs. good stuff in there. I'd love to do it. Okay, good. Well, thanks again, everybody. Awesomers.com slash 161. Go there now. Sign up for the webinar. You know, get in the game. And let's, uh, let's move on with uh, this thing. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, we'll Awesomers. All right. Thanks, Michael.